Okay, this is case 20. And here we have skin and we have a multiple nodules of really dark. It looks almost black here on this scan, but on a, a, a good scanner on an H&E, this would look like dark purple. Um, and this is dark purple. This is calcium and calcium calcification that has not been decalcified will look dark purple. If you use decalcification, the purple begins to get taken away. The purple is actually the calcium itself. And so it'll look different if you decal it. Um, the calcium here is not actually bone. It's actually loose aggregates of, of uh, calcium. Um, and uh, how we know is a bone is usually going to be more well formed. But calcifications that are uh, uh, calcifications are often fractured and fragmented like this. And sometimes also they have on this like loose granular powdery kind of appearance, uh, but some of it very fine, some of it bigger and more chunky. So this is, uh, depending on the situation, this is calcinosis cutis. Um, or in this case, this was uh, multiple nodules on the scrotum. So you can call this scrotal calcinosis. Um, but both... Calcinosis cutis and scrotal calcinosis, to my eye, they look the same microscopically. The difference is the, the clinical presentation. So they are calcium that's either big chunks with fragmentation or powdery granules with big blobs and chunks, making one or multiple aggregates in the dermis, usually surrounded by histiocytes and multinucleated giant cells. So they're getting kind of a granulomatous giant cell foreign body giant cell reaction around the outside of the calcification. All right, that's very typical of this. And they may have inflammation, may have fibrosis or scar, but usually not too much. And uh, in, in this case, again, the clinical information was that these were nodules on the scrotum. The other clue, if you're at a test and you've not been given the clinical information, is look at the skin in the background to try to figure out where you are. And in this case, there's multiple small bundles of smooth muscle, many bundles of smooth muscle, and they're kind of small and they go down into the deep dermis. That's a, the common finding in the scrotum or the labia majora in genital skin in general will have increased a density, a increased number of smooth muscle bundles, and they tend to be smaller than the smooth muscle bundles of the nipple. So the nipple and areola also has increased smooth muscle, but the bundles are usually really big and large. Uh, so that's a kind of subjective, but with practice, you can tell like these are much smaller than the bundles of, of, uh, of smooth muscle that I usually see in the nipple. So if I see this, I'm going to say this is probably from the scrotum or the labia majora or somewhere else around that site in the genital skin. So based on that, plus the calcium, I would say the answer is scrotal calcinosis on a test, even if I wasn't given the, the history. So uh, it's been debated why this happens in the scrotum. Uh, with uh, It seems to be idiopathic and not associated with any systemic abnormality, as, as some cases of calcinosis cutis elsewhere are sometimes associated with, you know, square, um, um, with, uh, uh, scleroderma or, or systemic sclerosis or with uh, you know, crest syndrome or other types of, um, of uh, cutaneous, I'm sorry, other types of systemic abnormalities. Um, uh, um, <clears throat> and so, uh, so or some, that's what the word I'm looking for, uh, phosphate or calcium abnormalities, um, some of those uh, parathyroid abnormalities, um, and uh, dermatomyositis and other things. You can go look up the whole list. But these in the scrotum don't seem to be associated with that, to my knowledge. They're just idiopathic. Some people have postulated that maybe these are because of uh, uh, epidermoid cysts or epidermal inclusion cysts that rupture and then get calcified. Um, and I, I think there are some people that still propose that that's the mechanism. I've had a hard time believing that because when I've seen this in practice, I usually don't see any keratin or any cyst lining in the cases that I've encountered. So maybe that's what happens, but I find it kind of strange. Why would that at the scrotum happen that way and not have any keratin or cyst lining left behind? Whereas when I see a ruptured epidermoid cysts elsewhere in the body, yes, yeah, sometimes they get a little bit of calcification, but not like this. So I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm a bit of a doubter about that theory, but but I some people propose that. But that said, I don't know why this happens, but that's idiopathic uh, scrotal calcinosis, which I think of as kind of a, morphologically it looks identical to calcinosis cutis uh, from other body sites, but no systemic associations.